Alors, euh, bonjour à tous et bienvenue à ce webinaire portant sur les tendances et les opportunités du secteur fintech de Hong Kong, organisé par Investissement Québec International, l'Association commerciale Hong Kong Canada et Invest Hong Kong. Mon nom est Julie Coulombe et je suis conseillère spécialisée en affaires internationales chez Investissement Québec International à la Direction des marchés Asie-Pacifique et Océanie. Je suis Très heureuse d'avoir aujourd'hui avec nous des experts euh, du secteur fintech de Hong Kong, du Consulat général du Canada de Hong Kong, d'Invest Hong Kong et d'Amino Capital, pour vous présenter un survol de l'écosystème, des occasions d'affaires et des opportunités de financement à considérer euh, à Hong Kong. Le webinaire d'aujourd'hui comprendra une série de présentations et sera suivi d'un panel de discussion. Nous vous invitons à soumettre vos questions euh, via la section Q&A de la plateforme. Le webinaire se déroulera en français et en anglais. Avant d'entrer dans le cœur du sujet, permettez-moi de vous présenter brièvement les services d'Investissement Québec international. Ça ne devrait pas être très long, alors voilà. Donc, Investissement Québec international, qui sommes-nous? Nous sommes un regroupement de ressources dédiées à l'exportation qui accompagne les PME et les grandes entreprises du Québec qui souhaitent accélérer leur démarche de développement des marchés à l'extérieur du Québec. Donc, nous sommes une équipe d'une centaine d'experts basés à Montréal et à Québec, ainsi que dans les bureaux du Québec à l'étranger, à offrir des services d'aide à l'exportation. Vous avez ici le réseau économique du Québec à l'étranger qui comprend plus de 33 représentations un peu partout à travers le monde, avec de plus fortes concentrations de bureaux du Québec, là, comme vous pouvez le voir, en Amérique du Nord, en Europe et en Asie. Pour ce qui est de Hong Kong, nous avons un bureau d'immigration à Hong Kong et une antenne économique à Shenzhen qui couvre le territoire hongkongais. Euh, on travaille également en collaboration avec le Consulat général du Canada à Hong Kong pour répondre aux besoins, aux demandes des entreprises. Donc, Investissement Québec International offre principalement deux formes d'accompagnement aux entreprises, soit des suivis individualisés et des activités de groupe. Donc, lorsqu'on parle d'un suivi individualisé, on parle d'un accompagnement d'une entreprise selon ses propres besoins à elle. Donc, cela peut être la transmission de conseils sur la culture d'affaires d'un pays, par exemple, jusqu'à l'identification d'occasions d'affaires ou de contacts d'affaires, et ça peut aller jusqu'à l'organisation d'une mission commerciale individuelle. Lorsqu'on parle d'activité de groupe, et on en fait plusieurs chez Investissement Québec International, ça peut être des webinaires sur des marchés comme celui auquel vous participez aujourd'hui, des accueils d'acheteurs et des missions commerciales, incluant des missions commerciales virtuelles. Vous avez ici les noms et coordonnées des conseillers d'investissement Québec international responsables du secteur des technologies. Donc, si jamais vous souhaitez avoir recours à nos services, je vous encourage à communiquer directement avec la conseillère qui est responsable du territoire que vous visez. Alors, euh, voilà. Je vais maintenant céder la parole à Christopher Chen, qui est euh, Head of Investment Promotion at Invest Hong Kong, pour sa présentation. Thank you, uh, Julie. Uh, bonjour, everybody. Uh, my name is Christopher Chen, uh, Head of Invest HK uh, for Canada, effectively operating as the trade consul for the Hong Kong Economic and Trade Office. Uh, my presentation today will be on uh, the fundraising opportunities for fintechs in, uh, in Hong Kong. So uh, I'd like to begin this presentation uh, with a short introduction as to why, uh, why Hong Kong. Uh, most of you may or may not have heard of the significance of Hong Kong as a financial capital. Um, but uh, hopefully at the end of this presentation, you'll become fairly familiar with what we have to offer. Uh, for those of you who do not know much about Hong Kong, Hong Kong is one of the world's top capital markets. It is ranked third in the world after New York and London. It is one of the easiest places to do businesses in the world. It takes about 1.5 days to start a business in Hong Kong. It has one of the most lenient tax regimes 
in the world. In fact, it has the world's lowest tax jurisdiction with a cap of about 18% at the highest um, bracket. Uh, it is one of the most judicially independent uh, areas of the world uh, and has one of the cleanest governances of any territories in the world. It is simply put a great place to conduct business and the hub for any company wishing to enter the Asia Pacific. Uh, many of you may already have known everything on the previous slide, but many of you probably would not know about this slide. Hong Kong is now part of a larger ecosystem. It is part of an area called the Greater Bay Area, which is basically Hong Kong blended with Guangdong province of China, which has roughly a total population of 70 million people effectively making it a super economic region. Think of, of like the Ruhr Valley in Germany or Silicon Valley in the United States. Basically a conglomeration of a number of cities all contributing to the growth and marketability of an economic super region uh, with a GDP of about $1.5 trillion uh, US dollars uh, on par with an entire nation such as the Netherlands or Turkey. Uh, by history, uh, Hong Kong is a financial capital. Um, it, there used to be a great saying back in the 60s and 70s, as soon as you come off the airplane and landed at Hong Kong airport, you would have a special smell in the air, and that smell was money. Hong Kong remains one of the world's largest equity fundraising center. It's the third largest bond center in Asia, ex, uh, Japan. What this has done is it has created a legacy of a lot of assets, of a lot of equity sitting in Hong Kong, along with a lot of financial expertise. That amount of capital with that amount of specialization and investment has led Hong Kong to become a center of innovation in the 21st century. Simply put, that money now has to be invested somewhere. So what it has done is it's created an environment of new opportunities. FinTech is one of the big pillars of Hong Kong's uh, strategic initiatives, along with life sciences and asset management being the other two major pillars. But FinTech first and foremost leverages Hong Kong's strategic and historical bench strengths. This has taken the form of something called the Innovation Technology Commission. This has been spearheaded. This is a creation of the Hong Kong government. It's, this commission has led to the creation of the Innovation Technology Fund, which is a US $13 billion effectively government run VC pot run by the Hong Kong government, dispersed by multiple agencies and bureaus of the Hong Kong government, uh, doled out to companies in specific sectors, from startups to fintechs to life sciences. I'm not gonna go through all the little uh, details around this wheel, um, anybody who wants to have a copy of this presentation, uh, feel free to shoot me an email at the end. But needless to say is that this fund is dispersed to companies that are inbound going into Hong Kong within innovation and technology. And FinTech is one of the core pillars of innovation technology for Hong Kong. This has led to a huge pipeline of startup investments. The number of startups in Hong Kong, as well as our operations, has grown dramatically over the last six years. The amount of startups as of beginning of 2020 was roughly about 3,500. Um, you know, this started from uh, 2014 was only about 1,000. But the amount of employees has grown by a factor of six since that same time period. This is a direct result of the amount of emphasis uh, Hong Kong has put towards startups. And remember, I was talking about the Greater Bay Area. The Greater Bay Area has unparalleled access to investment opportunities. They have act, by being in Hong Kong, you have access to Chinese capital, Chinese private equity. Um, and the reason for that is that outgoing Chinese capital from China going to the outside world, 60% of that is funneled through Hong Kong. And the same goes the other way. So the amount of financial expertise, the amount of Chinese capital located in Hong Kong is a unique selling point that is not found anywhere else in the world. If you want to be, want to be in a place ruled by law with full intellectual property protection, 
Yeah, you want access to the mainline Chinese market and capitalization, Hong Kong is the place to be. And net result is the number of unicorns in the greater Bay Area is now roughly 28. There might be 29 right now, but as of 2019, there are 28 unicorns, unicorns being companies with at least $1 billion valuations, startup companies with at least 1 billion US uh, valuations. So what is the FinTech opportunity? You know, we recognize that the companies that have tuned in today are of the FinTech background. So what is the specific opportunity? The ecosystem today has leveraged Hong Kong's financial services background into a vibrant mini economy or mini marketplace of fintechs. There are now 600 plus fintech companies in Hong Kong. 53% of it see Hong Kong as a base for global expansion. 51% of companies operating or plan to expand in the greater Bay Area. And we actually have government support and funding for companies that wish to land in Hong Kong and branch out both in the greater Bay Area into mainland China, Southeast Asia. We actually do provide financial and financial support as well as expertise. 76% uh, of the fintech companies focus on the B2B market. That's understandable when you see the amount of financial services companies that are located in Hong Kong. Uh, and 37% of fintech founders came from overseas. And that's very important for companies from Quebec to realize is that not all of these companies are homegrown. 37% are actually companies that started in another country and decided to put a branch office, whether it's sales and marketing, investor relations, R&D, uh, software development. They put them in Hong Kong. 37% of them are actually run, um, are actually run by uh, non-locals. In terms of the financial services opportunities in Hong Kong, uh, the numbers sort of speak of themselves. In terms of asset wealth management, there's 747 firms in Hong Kong. In terms of banking, there's 160 plus licensed banks. There's eight virtual banks. The virtual banks um, are new. Uh, basically, Hong Kong has liberalized its uh, granting of virtual bank licenses. And this has led to uh, almost an average of two new virtual banks launching per year. Um, digital payments, there are more than 100 uh, digital payment companies. In terms of insurance, oh, sorry, I just need to go back to banking. If you look at the concept that there's 160 licensed banks in Hong Kong, when you compare that to the entirety of Canada, how many licensed banks are there in Canada? This is basically like a tenfold uh, difference of basically the liberalization and the capacity for banking presence in Hong Kong, which isn't just, uh, which isn't just uh, conducting business operations in Hong Kong. It's throughout all of Asia Pacific. Hong Kong is the starting hub for the rest of Asia Pacific. Uh, insurance companies, 162 insurance companies, two are virtual. 160 uh, insurance companies, actually it's about the same as Canada. Um, however, if you look at the scale of population and the scale of market, it's actually, you can tell there's a heavy concentration of insurance companies um, in Hong Kong. In terms of uh, small to medium sized enterprises, the mid market, uh, there's about th 340,000 SMEs. Uh, this is, of course, inclusive of startups. Um, those that focus exclusively on import and export, there are more than 100,000. Bearing in mind that Hong Kong has a population of um, anywhere between 6.5 to 7 million, I think 7 million actually. Um, so if you think about the amount of commercial activity that's going in um, such a concentrated area is why Hong Kong is ranked so highly uh, in the financial markets. Now this page, um, like again, I think a, a vast multitude of you will find interesting. And this is the funding sources, Hong Kong government schemes relevant to fintech. Um, I think uh, uh, there are uh, a number of programs that help fintech companies, whatever part of the scale up funnel they may be, um, may be uh, taking part in. Um, beginning stage, you know, there's a waiver of the business registration fee. That is, that's just, you know, when you're, when you're starting. In the growth stage, at the research and development stage, there are a number of schemes that help out fintech firms 
um, regardless of what type of fintech companies they may be, whether you're uh, insure tech, reg tech, uh, wealth tech, payments. Um, I mean, if you're involved in the research and development if, cycle of the startup funnel, of the scale up funnel, uh, there are government disbursements to be had. Whether they are dispersed by us uh, as InvestHK or by the insurance authority, which is the licensing body for the insurance industry, um, the SFC, the Securities and Futures Commission for those dealing in equities, um, the monetary authority, uh, which is the equivalent of the Canadian monetary authority, effectively. Um, there are compliance sandboxes run by uh, the government. Each one is an agent of disbursement for government funds. And this is only government. We're only talking about the public sector. We're not talking about uh, the private sector. In terms of hiring, uh, we will cover um, hiring. Uh, we will cover uh, one to two employees of companies that, uh, that are uh, building themselves in, uh, in Hong Kong. In terms of business development, we offer vouchers. Fundraising, we offer, um, that's a direct tap into the Innovation Technology Venture Fund. And then the interesting one is that in terms of overseas expansion, for those who wish to uh, expand out of Hong Kong, again, we offer support. Now, this is only, um, this is only government schemes relevant to FinTech. There are actually plenty more government schemes relevant to startups that are not actually listed here, but these are the ones that are relevant to FinTech. So even if you are a fintech, if you qualify as a startup, you're actually eligible for more avenues of funding, um, depending upon which government bureau you may choose to tap into. And you may actually be able to tap into multiple government bureaus at the same time. Now, in, that was uh, public funding. In terms of private funding, um, I think um, Sue, uh, Sue Shu from Amino Capital, um, who is a, one of our panelists, may be able to shed some light as to what the venture capital uh, outlook, um, the investment uh, environment may look like. Needless to say, it's huge. Um, there is not only Hong Kong-based VC firms and VC networks, there are also mainland Chinese VC firms and networks that have the potential to be tapped into. And InvestHK is always happy to facilitate those meetings, if not done directly by the firms themselves. Um, one potential note, one note I want to bring up is uh, the Hong Kong stock market is the most buoyant in the world. Um, basically, over the six the last 10 years, we've ranked number one in terms of total IPO fundraised. Uh, in terms of fundraised specifically for fintechs, uh, raised uh, US $10 billion. Um, this is an extremely active and healthy market. Um, there are always forces at work that ebb and flow um, the equities market, but over the last several years, Hong Kong has basically seen a net growth for any companies willing to have an exit strategy um, uh, launch in the most, uh, in the most um, positive way. Um, in terms of the top motivations to expand the GDP, GBA. Uh, first and foremost is access to a larger market. Um, few companies go into Hong Kong thinking, I'm only going to, I'm going to launch a business in Hong Kong and I'm just going to stay there. Suffice to say, almost nobody says that. Uh, basically, everybody who goes into Hong Kong thinks Hong Kong is uh, a market that's stable, offers intellectual property protection, offers basic law, great lifestyle, a diverse cosmopolitan um, and well-educated uh, talent pool, but it gives me access to the rest of Asia and mainland China, and that's important. You know, strategically and geographically located in the middle of Asia, it is the starting point to reach both Southeast Asia and North Asia. That is, that is an undisputed fact. So, uh, last couple of slides. Who is InvestHK? Who are we? Um, realized I probably could have put this at the beginning, but I just want to make sure that everyone understands the benefits of uh, investing in Hong Kong. Um, 
we like to say that we connect the dot and plug you into our ecosystem. We are actually a government agency of the Commerce and Economic Development Bureau uh, of the Hong Kong government. Uh, our specific task is to get Canadian companies, Quebec companies into Hong Kong. Now, to get, to get a company into Hong Kong and register you and you know, do the minutes from corporation, honestly speaking, anyone can do that. Our true value add is actually the facilitation and introduction of introducing you to partners and customers and clients so that you do well. We want every company that goes into Hong Kong to do well and perform well and survive a fairly competitive marketplace. Hong Kong is capitalistic. It is very competitive. In order to survive, you must be running when you hit the ground. So we will introduce you to investors. We will introduce you to banks, to associations, multipliers, accelerators, universities for a talent, for a talent pool. We will introduce you to uh, other government agencies um, that will help you craft new R&D strategies, new collaborations. Um, again, it doesn't take, anyone can introduce you to a law firm or an accounting firm or a corporate secretary to do your uh, to do your registration in corporation. Any company can do that, but to facilitate the introductions to corporates, governments, investors, that's our value add. Um, by coming in with InvestHK, you come in under government auspices. No one's we, you've automatically got the door open for you. We will also introduce you to the Canadian Trade Commission. We do that at par for the course. It's best to have two governments working for you rather than one. That's our belief. And it's, it's a no coincidence that the Canadian Trade Commission actually um, will uh, share a bit of uh, information about themselves. Um, running out of time, but the uh, last slide is um, a little bit about uh, past Canadian Invest HK clients. There are approximately about 200 Canadian companies in Hong Kong. InvestHK put 180 of them there. Um, the only companies that we didn't put in there are the ones that were existing prior to InvestHK's existence, namely, like, for example, RBC or um, Manulife or ManuV in, uh, in uh, Quebec. Uh, but having said that, those companies came back to us for departmental expansion or for consultations with the Hong Kong, Hong Kong government. The reason being is that InvestHK is the gateway for any company wishing to expand or grow in Hong Kong. If they need to talk to the government, they come to us first because we basically, if they want, we just facilitate those meetings with other government officials because, for example, if you're in RBC, you don't actually know who to talk to. We do, we will facilitate the meeting. So I think uh, that's it for me. I've run out of time and that was my last slide. So at this stage, I'd like to uh, bring up the Canadian Trade Commission, one of the association, one of the organizations uh, that we work with. Um, I'd like to introduce uh, Richard Fong. He's a trade commissioner stationed in Hong Kong. He is uh, part of the Consulate General of Canada and um, his presentation will be how to be a part of the virtual HK FinTech week. So, um, Richard. Thank you very much, Chris, and good afternoon to everyone back in Canada. And uh, I'd like to give special thanks, first of all, to Invest Quebec, as well as Invest Hong Kong for inviting us to today's panel. Uh, today, uh, my name is Richard Fong from the Canadian Consulate in Hong Kong, and I run uh, the Canadian Tech Accelerator here in Hong Kong. So I just want to give my slides, um, give a presentation on how you can be part of Hong Kong FinTech Week 2020 this year virtually. Give me a sec. Perfect. So a little bit about the Canadian Trade Commissioner Service for those who don't know uh, about our services. We're part of Global Affairs Canada, a group of business, de business development professionals located in Canadian embassies and consulates abroad to support Canadian businesses, international expansions, helping with sales, exports, finding local partners, regulatory investment, et cetera. We're divided up in different sectors. So uh, I look at FinTech. I also look at property tech, prop tech, 
but then we have other colleagues around the world, uh, including in Hong Kong, looking at agri-food, education, aerospace, life sciences, to provide that specific industry expertise. We also have a regional office in Montreal. I know that most of you, or if not all of you, are connected with uh, Invest Quebec, uh, but we also, at the Trade Commissioner Service, we also have a regional office in Montreal, in case you didn't know. So a little bit about the Canadian Tech Accelerator. So uh, it's actually not a new initiative specifically uh, in general. We've been actually running for a decade. We first started off in Silicon Valley uh, and then expanded into the United States. But then um, as that grew to be successful, we've recently expanded to Asia. Uh, so this is a new initiative in Asia specifically to help Canadian technology companies to grow and expand with really the hopes of having Canadian tech companies grow to become globally competitive companies. That's really why we're here and what our function is. So why FinTech in Hong Kong? Uh, as Chris alluded to earlier in this presentation, uh, Hong Kong is a premier financial hub in Asia uh, with many of the largest financial institutions uh, having their regional headquarters or headquarters based here in Hong Kong. So FinTech is one of our major focuses in Hong Kong uh, for the Hong Kong CTA. So we're, as I mentioned, we, we focus quite a bit in FinTech specifically for uh, the CTA here in Hong Kong. Uh, we work with, I think we cover most uh, of the big financial institutions here in Hong Kong. The ones that are interested and want to work with startups or FinTechs uh, in the ecosystem. So anyone ranging from JP Morgan uh, to more local banks like Hang Seng, uh, Convoy, um, then also some of the regional banks like DBS, but then also covering some of the insurance players uh, like Prudential, AIA, AXA, who all have uh, their regional headquarters here in, in Asia, in Hong Kong. Um, we also look at the venture capital space as well. Uh, we know that fintechs are always looking to grow uh, using uh, venture capital. So we, we cover also the VCs here in Hong Kong, as well as in the region. Um, so we work quite closely with the big corporate FIs, as well as investors here in Hong Kong. Um, so we can provide value to fintechs like yourselves. So here's a slide, uh, uh, really a snapshot uh, of some of the companies that we've been working with. So uh, we've been introducing a lot of the Canadian uh, tech, uh, Canadian fintechs to some of the larger, larger FIs. So here's just a few examples that we've been working with uh, in the past. Uh, we've been working with uh, quite a few in, in, in recent months as well. So uh, today's presentation is really about this for uh, Hong Kong FinTech Week is coming up uh, in November. And unfortunately due to uh, the COVID situation right now, uh, it's gonna be purely virtual this year. So we're looking to give out 10 tickets to Canadian FinTechs. Um, so each of the FinTechs will get five passes uh, for uh, team members uh, on your team uh, and it's on an application basis. So you just need to apply to this program or our Canadian Tech Technology Accelerator program uh, in the link below, uh, tradecommissioner.gc.ca slash CTA dash ATC. Um, and then uh, once you apply, we'll review your application. And if you uh, are a suitable match, we'll uh, provide links to passes, which should be ready in October, according to organizers. So what you'll get out of the, uh, vir the virtual Hong Kong FinTech Week this year is uh, live streams uh, for play or playback content, given the time zone issues, in-app matchmaking with potential investors and clients, uh, company profile on the platform, networking uh, via video calls, et cetera, et cetera. And alongside participation for Hong Kong FinTech Week, uh, us here at the Hong Kong CTA will also provide bespoke services for Canadian FinTechs to do matchmaking, whether you're looking for uh, investor introductions or you're looking for uh, introductions to corporates, um, we'll basically tailor to what, what you're looking for, what you need um, uh, for, for Hong Kong FinTech Week. So we're very glad to provide the additional support alongside 
uh, what Hong Kong FinTech Week has to offer. So some of the selection criteria that we have, it's, these are ideally what, we, what we'd like to see, um, already have some traction with some clients, have some clients, be it in Canada or uh, United States, Europe, elsewhere in Asia, uh, Latin America, uh, in these areas, or have uh, raised a, a round of in institutional funding in, in, uh, in the regions that I just mentioned. So I, it was a short presentation. I only had five minutes. So uh, please feel free to uh, email me if you have any questions. Um, my email is above and uh, look forward to chatting with you more. So with that, I wanna turn it back to Julie uh, from Invest Quebec uh, and she'll introduce the panel um, for tonight, for this afternoon actually for you folks. <laughs> Oui, alors euh, merci beaucoup à Christopher et à Richard pour leur euh, présentation. Euh, effectivement, on va passer au deuxième segment du webinaire, soit le panel de discussion. Donc, euh, le panel va, va porter sur les tendances et les opportunités du secteur FinTech à Hong Kong. Les panélistes seront euh, Michael Kaczmarski, qui est Senior Manager FinTech at Invest Hong Kong, sous, euh, 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 sous chez de Damino Capital, qui est Managing Partner à Tamino Capital, et Richard Fong, qui est délégué commercial au Consulat général du Canada à Hong Kong. Le panel de discussion euh, sera modéré par Christopher Chen, et on vous encourage à poser vos questions euh, dans la section Q&A de la plateforme. Merci. Uh, Chris, I give you the floor. OK, thank you. So, one of the first questions that came in uh, is a pointed one, uh, and this is basically, what is current, what fintech technologies are currently in demand in Hong Kong slash Asia. Um, are there any fintech technologies that VCs are particularly interested in? So, um, Michael, do you want to take a first stab at it? Or Sue, would you like to take a first stab at it? Or Richard, uh, don't forget, you guys are on mute. So maybe I'll, I'll be happy to maybe uh, give a couple of words from, from our perspective. Uh, so um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, can you guys hear me well? Since this is the first time I'm speaking in this. Can you hear me well? Yeah. Um, as a part of the FinTech team uh, at Invest Hong Kong, um, we are ge geographically dispersed team. We have a team of 10 in Hong Kong and we have uh, me sitting in San Francisco and a colleague sitting in London. And uh, we've been constantly looking at uh, what companies are coming to us, but also what companies actually end up setting up in Hong Kong uh, and, and what companies uh, find uh, success talking to business partners. Um, and definitely because 2020 is such a strange year and so many shifts happen uh, in, the, in all kinds of uh, sectors, um, in fintech as well, we could see the shift. Um, specifically, companies that are doing right now well, and this is not going to be a huge discovery, but all the all the companies that help um, banks and financial institutions to switch to working remotely. Um, also, all the uh, technologies that help with touchless payments, um, as well as um, uh, companies that help with um, just in general. Uh, being able to run operations uh, for dispersed teams, um, especially within a banking sector. And apart from that, uh, and then maybe Sue will be able to uh, expand the, on, on that more, but overall, regardless of what, uh, what technology um, company offers, right now, the first question, especially coming from banks uh, and insurance companies, is how is this pandemics related or COVID related? So in other words, uh, why we should look at your product right now and not, let's say, a year from now when hopefully things will be more predictable. Um, and so we've seen a lot of companies kind of uh, switching their uh, pitch decks um, and, and adapting them to showcase how their product can be uh, used right now. So this is, this is, these are the kind of uh, big picture trends that we see as a, as a fintech team within Invest Hong Kong. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Go ahead, Sue. Uh, thank you, Richard. Um, 
uh, Chris, uh, Christopher and Nicole, and thank you for the opportunity to uh, talk to you guys. And uh, Amino, we have been around for eight years. We are a venture firm based in Palo and um, um, we focus on seed and growth stage companies in big data and data-driven technologies. And today, we actually invested over 160 companies, and uh, including Chime Bank, which is one of the you know, uh, most important challenger bank in the US. And we were their uh, seed money, almost the first check. And then they, before uh, pandemic, they already raised over, uh, under over 5.8 billion valuation uh, by DST. And then during pandemic, they actually enjoyed significant growth because when you look at the, you know, when you compare the challenger bank and the traditional bank, and then the biggest difference is the, uh, is the cost compensation. So for Challenger Bank, almost all their hiring are engineers. So they move extremely fast. And especially for a lot of the uh, incentive money or the government support money. And um, so Chime Bank, actually you just have to push a button and then they submit it for you. And then for a traditional bank, oftentimes it's not just the, that they, it, it, it's not just the, um, the government has a certain quota have to compete for it, but also the bank actually have to allocate resources, people and paperwork, it's a long process. So sometimes even though there is still quota, and then people cannot actually get access to their bank, to, to their banker to get it applied. So for Chime, it was a great opportunity for them. So um, they just push a button and then you can get the, um, the, the, the support money. And uh, so that's the beauty of uh, you know digital bank and neural bank. And not just China Bank, there is a, in Hong Kong, there is Fusion Bank, and extremely successful. And also um, we have, it was a homegrown um, Stanford, because we have an incubator next to downtown Palo So uh, there is a lot of, um, uh, so we invest a lot of Stanford mine. So um, the founder of we, we have, it was a, it was a, it's a beautiful story, is actually a Stanford GSB grad, and it went back to Hong Kong and started the we have and uh, very successful. It's one of the uh, first banks that actually get the license from Hong Kong government. So um, definitely in Hong Kong, um, FinTech is definitely one of the most important um, area for people because Hong Kong government has really, because you want regulation. Sometimes uh, VC, you, you want regulation because regulation actually adopt, um, a drive adoption. So uh, even like Challenger Bank um, uh, outside Hong Kong, a lot of them are still not a bank. So I have to say, because they don't have the license. So they have to take advantage of the ghost bank. But in Hong Kong, you know, there is already like a, a new bank. Uh, they, they got license from the government. So Hong Kong government moved really fast. So that's why we actually travel between um, Silicon Valley and Hong Kong. And then I actually uh, originally from China. So it, it's my nature. So I have to travel between Silicon Valley and Hong Kong. And our office in Hong Kong covers investment in Southeast Asia. And then we actually plan to enhance our deal flow from uh, Southeast Asia to through Hong Kong. And uh, also Hong Kong provide our portfolio company with liquidity and funding. And for example, our early stage investment made one. Uh, the food delivery giant actually enjoyed, you know, price earning ratio of over 300 times. So yeah, so I'm extremely happy to be here. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, I'll also quickly chime in. I know that there's probably more questions, but I think um, the questions on, on, on VCs in, in Hong Kong and what they're interested in, I think, for Hong Kong, because we, uh, here, we here at the CTA, we, we engage with quite a few um, fintech investors here in Hong Kong. So we, we noticed that a lot of the fintech investors here in Hong Kong are looking for more of the later stage companies instead of the really, really early stage uh, uh, fintechs. So um, definitely, if you if you have some traction in in back in your home market in Canada, or you have some traction in um, United States or elsewhere, um, those success stories really work well with some of the ba big banks here in, in 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 Hong Kong. As you as you all know, I'm sure uh, financial institutions are uh, very conservative organizations at heart. So uh, they're definitely trying to uh, de-risk as much as possible uh, from, from, from their side. So investors are also looking uh, to have uh, definitely some traction uh, within uh, the, the, the startup in order 
uh, for them to make make those investments. But then if you have those, uh, I think you have a pretty good chance uh, here in Hong Kong. Um, on, on to the question uh, on what kind of technologies, I think it really depends on, on which bank. So banks like uh, HSBC, Standchart, um, DBS, those are more on the uh, consumer banking side or commercial banking side. They're looking for technologies in those areas. Uh, whereas uh, say like a JP Morgan or a Morgan Stanley, they're looking for more maybe sales and trading tools or uh, investment banking uh, tools, big corporate banking tools, um, uh, KYC, AML, those are, those are of interest uh, to them. And uh, I think one of the bigger trends is also insurance. Um, we, sp we we're speaking a lot on, on, on the banking side, but then also on the insurance, they're looking a lot on the health tech um, area, anything that can help them uh, process claims faster, especially during uh, the COVID pandemic. I know Michael was, uh, was talking a little bit about that, anything COVID uh, or pandemic related, I think those are very of interest. Um, anything that can uh, process claims faster, um, can track or monitor health of uh, uh, the, uh, the clients that they have, uh, those, are, those are probably areas of interest right now and probably moving forward too, so. Actually, if I might, I would like to add to, to, to Richard's, uh, I could not agree more in terms of the size of the companies. That, that, that's what, what, what we see as well, is that the companies that are in Hong Kong's sweet spot and find success are companies that are, we call them more scale-ups rather than startups. So companies that already um, s uh, secured some funding from home, uh, already have some uh, track record of success and validated product, uh, because it takes some time um, to actually uh, score those clients within financial services sector. Uh, and as we know, Hong Kong is not the cheapest place to, to, to live and operate. So you need to have that runway. And actually to that end as well, I, I, I don't think I mentioned, this hasn't changed, but this is something that, that is important for companies to know. Hong Kong is particularly attractive for companies that operate in B2B space. Uh, and that of course is connected with what Chris showed in his presentation, the fact that there's such a huge number of banks such a huge number of uh, insurance companies and Michael, how's your connection? No. Okay, so uh, let Michael uh, reconnect. <laughs> um, I blame that on the wildfires of in, uh, in and around San Francisco. Um, how, next question. How did the landscape, especially the fintech landscape, change in Hong Kong as compared to the pre-COVID-19 era? And I think I'll ask um, Shu and, uh, Sue and uh, Richard that, uh, mostly Richard, because uh, you're there right now and you've probably uh, seen the changes uh, upfront and personal. I think I touched a little bit on that uh, in, my, in my earlier response. I think, uh, like Michael was saying earlier, um, really switching to some of the more COVID-related uh, um, issues that 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 are plaguing some of the uh, insurance companies. For example, I can speak from experience. Um, recently, Swiss Re they were asking us about um, if they have any Canadian companies, Canadian startups that are looking for um, processing claims faster um, because they're they've been getting so many. Uh, uh, claims from either uh, because as they're they're rein, reinsured, they're getting a lot more um, uh, claim processing requests. So they need something to move things quicker. Um, but then also on health tech. Uh, so another example back in Canada, actually a, v a recent success story where uh, Pi Health, who was doing uh, digital monitoring and tracking, uh, they recently struck up a partnership with Prudential Asia. Uh, this is very recent, I think about a month or two ago. Uh, so we see that as a success, not just in Hong Kong, uh, but also a, a cross, uh, cross country collaboration between Hong Kong and as well as Canada. So we see, uh, we see definitely a lot of opportunities uh, right now, um, even though it's, it's, uh, we're, we're going through a pandemic, but there's also business opportunities that are brewing out. Yeah, uh, definitely, totally agree. And then um, COVID actually accelerated the transition to remote and automated fintech services. And then besides the KYC that uh, Richard just mentioned, and uh, there was also like cybersecurity and prior to uh, COVID, actually those big banks in Hong Kong already struggling to actually keep client data safe. 
and um, and more clients shift online post COVID. So this issue increases both in size and priority. So uh, I should say because Amino's investment thing has been data, so I should say that AI actually more and more companies are now offering fully digital products and services, not just customer service anymore. So you probably know that a lot of banks used to have you know customer service uh, in Philippines, but uh, during COVID it has to shut down. So a lot of banks actually go to Amazon. You know they have this um, you know like a, a chatbot for customer service. So their business actually went up a lot. So it also open up a lot of opportunity for um, you know AI, uh, AI bot um, and other like really deeply integrated fintech bot companies. So we have seen the inbound requests from the banks and a lot of the you know like the uh, POC has been started before. It's very interesting that banking and fintech actually um, kind of like take advantage of this uh, kind of like thrive, not just survived during COVID and. Um, for example, other companies that uh, we have companies that AI company used to work with like Fortune 500 companies, and then they are they are tech companies, so they actually um, kind of like talking to the engineering or RD R and D side of the uh, maybe like Samsung, some other tech giants. However, during COVID, what they heard from the uh, big tech companies is that sometimes the whole department got made off, and sometimes you know like you heard that the Silicon Valley has. You know, big slash of uh, uh, laid off um, during the last couple months. So, um, but fintech, um, they don't have that kind of problem. Maybe if I might, um, also one of the opportunities as well is uh, we see a lot of companies take this time to actually uh, gauge the interest of their audience uh, or potential clients. Um, the fact that everything switched to the virtual means that you don't have to travel, you don't have to spend money or time or fight with the jet lag um, in order to reach out to, to your clients um, uh, or potential clients. Uh, say, 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 same applies to the Hong Kong FinTech Week that Richard mentioned that we promote. Um, because it's virtual, uh, this year we, we expect over 20,000 people in attendance. Uh, so whether you, like Stu and me, sit in San Francisco or you're based in, in, in Montreal, uh, you can just turn on your camera um, and you can just participate. Um, we do realize that time zone wise, uh, unless you are obsessed with FinTech and obsessed with Hong Kong you, and, and you are based in Montreal, you might not uh, participate in real time uh, because it will be in the middle of your night. Uh, but we still encourage companies to and people to uh, take advantage of the networking platforms. We will have the solution called DealFlow, uh, which helps uh, with business matching during the conference, and you can do that outside of the kind of um, business hours of, of the actual conference. Uh, but having said that, and having said the, 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 that it's easier right now to connect with clients without leaving Montreal or without leaving San Francisco, even if they are based in Hong Kong. Um, a lot of companies that we speak to that are at the initial stages of looking at Asia uh, tell us Okay, so um, since everything is done virtually now or everything that is done remote, uh, I, I planned to have an office in Hong Kong, but now I'm scrapping that idea uh, because I feel that I will be able to uh, sell my product uh, without setting up operations. Um, and we understand that approach because of course, if you are a startup, you are lean and mean, you don't wanna uh, spend or complicate your, your structure, but from what we see that doesn't work. So initial conversations with companies, yes, they work, but actually selling a product and being able to sign that contract, for that you have to be geographically located in, in, in the same location, um, especially from if your clients are conservative, um, risk averse institutions such as financial institution. Yeah, I have a very, um, very specific question here. Um, I have a company that uh, wants to know specifically how do fintechs looking for funding engage with uh, with VCs or financial partners to commercialize? Uh, and, and do you do uh, pre-seed and seed funding at this stage? So I think that's mostly towards Sue and Michael can talk about the engagement with uh, VCs or angel investors. Uh, so actually, in uh, in Hong Kong, there is like almost like three different type of money, and there is like family offices, 
have been setting up shop in Hong Kong, allocating asset into greater China area. So they are oftentimes leading to partners of Sequoia China and other top tier VC investing in China market. And then there was second type of money, which is like the super rich of Hong Kong, and they are exposed to hot deals globally, no matter Canadian companies like Smack or US company like Airbnb. So you they want in and they don't mind to be very big investing, very expensive late stage. But there are also a third type of early stage focus that are found and promoting entrepreneurship. So uh, I think you can you can find them online. So there is like a, a partnership kind of like a fund. So I think Hong Kong governments have about like five different partners and then they can match one to one or one to two. So those are definitely designated to actually invest in early stage. And also there is fourth type of um, the early stage venture firms like Amino. Um, you know, so our partners, early Google employee, they joined Google year 2000. They also helped Google to go to China. Well, even though Google China left back to Hong Kong, however, there is a lot of a really good ex-Googlers starting company in China and also rest of the world. So that's why we actually follow really good entrepreneurs. So in China, as I mentioned, we invest in mobile and make one. And then those were founded by ex-Googlers in China. And also the recent, um, even though during pandemic and the US, um, US China attention, there was another company called the Egg, uh, Egg Residential was also founded by ex in China. And then he was later became the LinkedIn China head. And he brought a company, uh, I think Egg Shell or something, um, uh, to public in NASDAQ, the first uh, Chinese concept stock in NASDAQ this year. So, um, so there was a lot of success. and. Uh, uh, I think there are, so Hong Kong is a very interesting place. It's, it's definitely old school and new school. So for example, when I, uh, I'm, I'm based in downtown Palo most of the time. So I, I don't need to social anymore because people, if you contact me through LinkedIn and then I found your background interesting and you found my background interesting, we actually, um, you know, can set up a call and then I actually, um, maybe we invest in you. And um, uh, it's very easy to get a referral because we have about 80 limited partners in Silicon Valley. They are exactly at Facebook, Amazon, LinkedIn. So it's very easy to check background of those um, of your company. And then Hong Kong, same thing. Hong Kong, you can get. So I talked to a couple of really good entrepreneur and important investors in Hong Kong through LinkedIn. So, but there, but in Hong Kong, there's also this old school people, and then they don't mind to actually, if they find you interesting, they are this middle person, and then they are bankers, they are governments, so they, they, they don't mind to introduce you to their most important trusted partners if they talk to you, they find you interesting. So um, even the government, they also do, you know, matchmaking. Uh, so uh, I recently actually enjoyed one of the matchmaking by the Hong Kong government, and I met some of the very interesting investors and also uh, entrepreneurs. So I think um, that's more like a, those people, it's very difficult to actually um, get referred to if you only use LinkedIn. So because some of them have Chinese background and some of them are uh, Chinese family offices, so they don't have a LinkedIn. And uh, so, but Hong Kong is a great place that you have both type of people. Uh, and from our perspective, um, I would add, um, we, advise companies to, um, first of all, uh, really consider setting up uh, even a small shop in Hong Kong, even if it's one person tasked with building investor relations, uh, um, you should do that uh, because Hong Kong is very relationship driven. Uh, and as Sue mentioned, you know, you, you have the new school and old school. So you have people that you can connect on LinkedIn and answer conversations, but you also have the old school and old school tends to uh, have access to bigger pools of money. Uh, the old school that uh, likes likes meetings, likes to uh, have introductions. Um, and Hong Kong is a small, big city in a sense that if you are based there, if you are somewhere on the Hong Kong Island, preferably with an office, I'd say we work in, in, in Central or another corporate space in Central, which is um, the, the main um, banking uh, and financial services uh, neighborhood of, 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 of Hong Kong. Uh, then you you have a high um, higher like uh, li likelihood to actually engage uh, with family offices and with VCs. Um, when it comes to access to uh, governmental funding, 
uh, one of the vehicles that I see as, as the most successful based on the four, four years of, of working uh, for Invest Hong Kong and, and working with companies uh, is um, the funds that are accessible through Hong Kong Science and Technology Park. Uh, Hong Kong Science and Technology Park, as the name suggests, focuses on uh, R&D uh, related activities. So if the person asking us a question um, has uh, intention to, uh, to do R&D, uh, related projects, uh, then Hong Kong Science Park uh, is, is, a, is a good entity and I'll be happy to make an introduction mm, and see where we can take that. Uh, with the other types of funding, mm, again, if, if it's a governmental funding, it is for companies that intend to operate in Hong Kong, like genuinely in, intend, not just pretend that they want to be in Asia, take money and, and, and do something else somewhere else. Uh, companies with intend to be uh, in, in Hong Kong and in most cases for companies that are already incorporated and operational to some extent. Uh, with Hong, in Hong Kong. Okay, I, uh, there are a number of other questions, um, but uh, we're out of time. So I think uh, I'd like at this point, I'd like to thank uh, the three of you for taking part in the panel. Um, what I would like to do is I'd like to share everyone's uh, contacts on the screen via share um, for all our, for all, for our viewing audience please feel free to screen cap or write down um, the contacts. Uh, so as you can send each one of us an, uh, an, individual, um, an individual email. Um, uh, at your leader. Um, at this point, I'd like to give it back to uh, Julie, our host, and um, let her close it up. Thank you, Chris. Thank you to all our speakers for this very interesting discussion. Sue, Chris, Richard, and uh, Michael. Um, donc, uh, comme uh, vous avez pu le constater, là, au fil des présentations, il existe vraiment plusieurs opportunités d'affaires pour les entreprises québécoises du secteur des technologies financières à Hong Kong, mais aussi plusieurs ressources disponibles pour vous aider à mieux comprendre ce marché et à saisir les opportunités. Donc, uh, vous avez ici uh, l'ensemble des coordonnées là, des, des présentateurs d'aujourd'hui. Donc, je vous invite à nous contacter si euh, vous souhaitez avoir de l'aide pour développer le marché euh, hongkongais. Euh, avant de conclure, je, je souhaite brièvement vous présenter une dernière ressource euh, disponible euh, que toute entreprise qui souhaite faire affaire avec Hong Kong euh, devrait connaître. Il s'agit de l'Association commerciale Hong Kong Canada, qui est d'ailleurs partenaire euh, dans l'organisation de ce webinaire. Donc, euh, c'est une association qui a plus de 200 membres à Montréal et qui organise régulièrement des événements pour euh, informer les gens de la communauté d'affaires qui ont des intérêts communs liés à Hong Kong et aussi leur permettre d'échanger et de réseauter. Donc, euh, si vous souhaitez avoir plus d'informations, je vous invite à aller visiter leur site Web. Puis, je vais également partager une diapositive là, sur l'association euh, après ma conclusion. Donc, euh, au nom d'Investissement Québec international et de l'Association commerciale Hong Kong Canada, je vous remercie d'avoir été des nôtres et je remercie à nouveau euh, nos conférenciers euh, d'aujourd'hui. Alors, euh, merci et à la prochaine. Thank you, everybody. Merci. Thank you for taking part. Thank you. All right, thank you, guys. Afternoon.